Hi, I'm Dana Perino, and you are watching The Pavlina Show, a very hip, very cool show, probably the coolest show I've ever been on. Hey everyone, it's Pavlina from The Pavlina Show, and we are here at the Fox Studios, and we're actually in Dana Perino's office, but former press secretary and also co-host on The Five, Dana Perino, how are you doing? I'm really good, I'm glad to see you in person. I know, I know, we did an interview in, you said April, right, when you were on your book tour? Yes, I did, and uh, you were one of the, my favorite interviews that I did. I remember where I was, I actually remember where I was in a hotel room talking to you. Oh my gosh, that is great. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah, I really enjoyed that interview. It was so it was a lot of fun. And I still have the book, which Good. I got you to sign this time. So it was, it was great. So what what do you find so interesting about politics and, you know, interviewing politicians? Because you've been interested in this for a while, like since an early age. Yeah, so my dad really started it with me when I was in third grade. I had to read uh, the Rocky Mountain News and the Denver Post, which were the two local newspapers. Mm -hmm. I had to read them every day before he came home from work and to choose a couple of articles to discuss with him him before dinner and I think back on that as like the time that probably um, helped bring my world together now right because I went to college to be a, in journalism a graduate school uh, in public affairs reporting then ended up working on Capitol Hill and then for the president of the United States in the Bush administration for seven and a half years um, and now having a chance to be on the five where I get to express my opinion about the news of the day makes it kind of like I get to do my hobby as my job, which has been wonderful for me. Yeah, that's amazing. That's so cool that your dad like started that with you mm -hmm. since an early age. And I think it's really important, especially for every child needs time with their parents. Yeah. But in particular, I think that that time between my father and I was really important for me to gain confidence in communicating effectively with uh, dominant male figures in my work life. Yeah, exactly. It prepared you perfectly for this. Yeah. And I, um, I also remember in our interview, we talked about how you were a radio DJ in college. Yes. I was a country music yeah. DJ. I made minimum wage from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. on Saturday and Sunday mornings. Yeah, I was just going to say it was 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. Like I wake up at 4 a.m. every morning to work, you know, mm -hmm. at my job, which I think is that's early. Is early. But <laughs> 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. Like, means yeah. that you don't actually go to bed. Oh, okay. beforehand <laughs> like why even bother but back back when I was in college if you really wanted to break into television you had to start in radio I don't think that's the case anymore mm -hmm. um, but it back then it was and it actually was good training it's character building yeah definitely <laughs> so how did like doing that like you know that 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. show prepare you for what you're doing now oh I don't really think it had any relevance <laughs> except for that um, one is that you have to be prepared to be public with your expressions okay so that can be that can happen for people in a lot of different ways like if you have to give a presentation in front of a classroom or in front of your co-workers or your superiors right at, at work or if you're in competitions like I was also on the speech and debate team mm -hmm. so I think that was good and also it was a little out of my comfort zone you know I didn't know a lot about country music I knew I kind of liked it but I didn't know any of the people or didn't really know anything about the music industry or the business but I learned a lot and I think the other thing that that helped me with to deal with now is that you know the five is not just a show that talks about politics we really broaden it out and it sometimes is out of my comfort zone to talk about cultural issues or Hollywood you know, when I worked at the White House for you know eight years I basically don't know any of the movies from the 2000s like I didn't watch them I didn't know any of the music at the time so I'm kind of a cultural black hole so I have to do actually a lot of research when we do topics like that and talking about politics I'm very comfortable with it foreign policy I had to live it for so long that I'm you know I got a base of understanding that I know what for the most part feel like I know what I'm talking about but when it comes to some of those more cultural issues um, I have to really stretch myself yeah, I know. I bet you like you were so surrounded in foreign policy stuff that yeah. you didn't have time to like go to the movies or yeah. something. You know? <laughs> not exactly. Yeah. And when I actually, and I did not even have an iPod uh, when I left the White House. I didn't have any music at all. So everything I had, um, I built from scratch. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. That's crazy. Like, cause you know, to think like that's all we hear now. Well, is I think like, the part of the thing is when you have a busy job like that, then you have to just prioritize. And there are yeah. things that you might enjoy in life that you really have to put to the back burner. And um, I always knew that the job was temporary, right? That pace and intensity was going to end. Either I would get fired or, <laughs> or the administration was going to end at some point. And um, yeah, I would say that I'm just now 
getting over being tired from that decade. Yes, definitely. Well, you know, now you can relax a little bit and go to go see, go see movies. some movies. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> so women in broadcasting or journalism in general, how is it different for them? Well, I think, well, if you th even think about, say, my grandmother, right? Or actually, let me go back. There is a legendary woman in um, journalism named Helen Thomas, and she covered um, the JFK assassination, but she was working for a wire service. And then she became a columnist. She, and she's a very controversial figure towards the end of her life, and she has since passed away. But I remember hearing stories from her about how they had to fight for an extra five dollars a week when she worked at the Washington Star, which was a competing paper of, against the Washington Post. Um, but she was a real pioneer in women being in journalism. And there were others too, Dorothy Parker, for example. But, um, you know, when I was growing up, I wanted to be a network news anchor. And there were really only three networks, ABC, NBC, and CBS. And they were all anchored by men. There were no women anchors. And um, that's still the c case for the most part. But the great thing that has happened is that there were women who were, were pioneers in the business. And then technology changed a little bit. Yeah. And now you have, for example, Megan Kelly, who anchors uh, a primetime show uh, at 9 p.m. on the Fox News Channel yeah. and is doing extremely well. And I always think about her as kind of the next wave of the pioneers um, for women in journalism. There are others. There are many others, in, um, some including, like, if you even think of me on the other side of journalism, I was the first Republican woman to be press secretary to the United yeah. States. So every time you do something that's the first, it's a little bit nerve wracking, a little bit scary. There's a lot of pressure, but it does help pave the way for um, other women. And I think the only thing that people like Megan or even like a Helen Thomas would ask of women that are getting into the field now is that you accept with grace yeah. the opportunity that you have, but that you're willing to also pass on to the next generation everything that you've learned and opportunities and to help them get started. Yes, definitely. That's amazing. And weren't you just on Megyn Kelly? Um, yes, yeah. we. Um, I, I have a chance to do her show every Wednesday night and we're very good friends and I enjoy that opportunity because um, unlike with the five where there's a lot of controversy and yeah. um, <laughs> you have to fight to get your word in edgewise, which I actually love. It's just a different pace for me and it's often a little bit more of a hard news situation. Yeah, that's so cool. Okay, so all around your office, you know, besides it being like a second wardrobe, which I think is so cool, I just realized that everything's color coded, which makes you even cooler because I color code my closet. I that from Mrs. Bush. Really? Laura Bush, when I, one time I got to see her closet and I was amazed and she told me that that's how she kept organized. Wow. She was a librarian, mm -hmm. so that's how she would, um, she, the Dewey Decimal System. Mm -hmm. In fact, their cat was named Dewey, and that's how she would catalog her clothes. Wow, that's first of all, that's a very cool fact. And second, I, I color coat my clothes too, so that's amazing. Anyway, but your dog, it Jasper, mm -hmm. amazing, adorable. Yes, and he's all over this office. Yes. So just you know, when what was it like the last well, time he did that made you smile? I think the other interesting thing about being, having a chance to be on Fox News and on the Five is that so when I was at the White House, my job was very. Um, people might have known me as the president's spokesperson, but they didn't know Dana Perino. Yeah. And who cared who I was, really? All I was was a spokesperson. Mm -hmm. Important job, but I mean, it didn't really matter. Like my thoughts and my personality, my background, it didn't really matter. Yeah. But when I came here and we started doing the show, um, we just put our whole selves out there. It's your entire personality, it's your whole life. So people, when I got to know my first dog, which was Henry, mm -hmm. and he, when we moved to New York, he was almost 14, oh, wow. and I'd been on the show about six months, and unfortunately, he passed away. Mm -hmm. And I shared that with the audience, and there was a huge outpouring of support, you know, and people love their pets all across America. So I always feel like if there's partisanship, like if Republicans or Democrats can't get along about policy, mm -hmm. there is one thing you can always agree on, and that is your dog. Right? Everybody loves their pets. And so um, there was um, a joy there. And also because my co-host would kind of make fun of me because I love my dog so much. And Greta Van Susteren, um, for, at the set, on the 7 p.m. show, she called me the night Henry died and she said, the most important thing you can do right now is get another dog. And I said, well, Greta, we just moved to New York and it's too hard and there's an apartment and I raise dogs in Wyoming, so I don't really know how to, you would raise a dog here. And she said, I'm telling you, it would be the best thing. And I took her advice at least to like think about and then the next day a couple of days my husband and I were in our apartment and it was so quiet and so lonely and I got to come to work every day but Peter works from home and so he really wanted to get another dog and so that's how we got Jasper Aww. and we introduced Jasper to the audience at the five and then 
because our show is very much just again about us yeah. he just sort of became a part of the show and in a way again they still make fun of him but i love it our i know i don't ever ask anyone to send me anything but just because people have that connection with me, they send me all sorts of things that they hand make, you know, oh. pillows and cross stitch, and they actually paint his picture. A couple of them I actually have um, hanging in my apartment and in, wow. uh, in our place in South Carolina because they're actually very good, yeah. better than what I could do. And it's also uh, just a nice reminder that we have a connection with our audience that a lot of other shows don't allow you to have because it's there's not that kind of interaction. Right. And I would also say the one thing I, I'm proud of with The Five and Fox News as a brand, when it comes to the integration of social media and our shows, I think that The Five is really, really good at it. Other shows, I think, have caught up to us and, and they're as good at it as we uh, started out. But we all came to the show with different backgrounds and we had our own identities and our own brands and we had already been in so involved in social media. So it sort of melded all together. And that's why Jasper became sort of a social media star. Yeah, sensation almost. That's amazing. Thank you so much for talking to me. I love talking to you and you can come by anytime. time.